Welcome everybody to another episode of Radical Money. Now, I wanted to do this episode today because I feel there's an important message that needs to be said to everybody. Um, with all the with all the craziness going on lately and uh, all the things going on, I think it's important we address all the issues uh, in this episode of Radical Money. Please also forgive me for any uh, quality issues. We're definitely trying to work a few little technical issues out. Um, lighting in here is not all that natural. I will say that. That <laughs> we're trying our best though to um, to create a more stable, uh, good environment. Um, and I wanted to, episode two of Radical Money. I wanted to go into a different concept than I usually go into. And this concept's about the the idea that you are a business. And I think most people, they don't see themselves as a business or anything that can... Because um, uh, when I look at myself, I look at myself as first off, foremost, an individual with multiple capabilities to give and contribute to others. That's my thing. I like helping people out. I like making things if I can. Um, I like taking whatever skill I have and, and giving it um, and, and using it in a way that helps other people out. Um, you know, and, and there's a few jobs that I, I'm able to do, especially when it comes to sales and things like that, that have always helped me out in being able to sell a good product to somebody, for instance. But, um, but well, one thing I have to say is I have a very good financial IQ. I understand... Uh, money and I understand um, what it's all about. So in this episode of uh, Radical Money, I kind of wanted to go in to um, an interesting subject that not a lot of people talk about. Cash is trash. It's still one of my favorite sayings, and I think it's uh, it's something most people should start uh, thinking about. So why why do I say cash is trash? Well, for one, cash is printed every day. We're always printing cash. Um, the government itself is printing cash at record numbers. Um, cash is, you know, when it was back when money used to be money, uh, when it was backed by gold and silver and things like that. When it when we went off the gold standard, that's when things turned bad. So what happened to the dollar was it, it was money at first, and then it became a currency. Second, so the problem with the currency is if you save a currency, currencies, no matter what they've ever been, because they're not backed by anything but government promises, right, is they will uh, disintegrate completely over time. Uh, so if you save $100 today, right, that $100 today that you save would be like, would be worth technically less, right? So the power that $100 has today, for instance, 10 years later would be like, it would be like the power of $10 or something like that. It would be less, the power would be less because inflation happens, cost of living goes up, blah, 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 blah. Um, inflation only rises increasingly because currencies, um, the problem with currencies is they're not backed by anything but lame promises. Um, and I've never been a big fan of currencies uh, at all, especially with my study of them. So my my goal, my whole thing is I want to <clears throat> I want to up people's financial IQs is my whole thing. My goal is to make you financially tick, financially think. I want to see you win. My goal is to help people win. So the reason I do radical money is to give you guys all the insight you need to to succeed in the game of money. Now, my thing is I don't really think about money that often. I really don't. I, I, I think about how to use it to get assets, but I, I'm i more asset obsessed than I am money obsessed. And I'll tell you why, because assets gain value over time. They also work with inflation. So as an example, I still, I, not a lot of people agree with me on this, but I solely believe stocks are assets. Because when you own part of a company, <coughs> that's huge. Like a Especially a good company. Like, if you own part of Coca Cola, by the way, if you own part of Microsoft, if you own part of Apple, and you get them at really good valuations, oh, fuck. You have no idea, man. Like, that's. It, 
especially during the bear market, I actually took advantage uh, and bought a few different ones like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola to this day is still my favorite stock because it pays a, a sweet dividend. Uh, it's rel relatively affordable to buy. Um, Coca-Cola products, they're great at marketing. Coca-Cola is incredible. Um, but um, in my last video, I went over the parts of 10. Now, the reason um, you're not seeing, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, you're not going to see episode one on YouTube. It's on my Facebook page. So they did a live pilot episode, and I may put the pilot episode actually just straight up on here on YouTube. Um, you know, my goal here is, is to financially educate you, uh, keep you financially educated, smart, smart as fuck. My goal is to keep you smart, just really smart. And uh, I'm going to get you on the right track. So I want to make sure we, we got you every time. Uh, I will admit, I did not plan episode two very well. Um, uh, at this point, my whole idea, my whole message to you, you the viewer, is this. What do you want uh, to create as far as assets are concerned? Now, when I say create an asset, I don't mean like buy assets. I mean like what sort of, and then I learned this from my boy Robert Kiyosaki, by the way, and I'm not explaining it very well. If you get bored, though, look, at, look up Robert Kiyosaki uh, creating assets. It's a very fascinating concept. But he, <coughs> he, um, he talks about how, oh, God, I, I'm trying to explain this very well, uh, you can create an asset through a thought process, right? A thought process that becomes a system. So what you do is you you create systems through um, through ideas you come up with, right? Um, in investing, for instance, I don't believe it's enough to just simply invest in the market. I came up with a, I wouldn't say foolproof system, but a system that allows me, no matter what direction the market goes, for me to prosper that no matter what direction it goes, I will get a profit no matter what, up or down. It just doesn't matter. The only time it won't profit is if it just straight lines, and that never happens in the market. Um, I mean, if it does, then, you know, that day I'm not getting profit. Oh, well. Uh, but that's why you have multiple streams of income. And the reason I tell everybody to have multiple streams of income is so you have the ability to have something to fall back on if one stream fucks you up. It gets fucked up. So always have multiple streams of income, for the love of God, please. That's all I ask. So um, I'm definitely a big investor guy. I will always be an investor guy. I love investing. It's it's a pastime. It's an obsession. I love it. And I'll tell everybody, uh, investing, don't do day trading. You could do swing trading. Swing trading is something I highly recommend. I hate day trading. I think it's dumb. It's really not a good idea. Even if you're a good tech, even if you're the best of the best technical analyzer, don't do it on your own. You're going to want to have a good team and a lot of capital if, if you do day trading. Like you have just shit tons of capital. And now, the cool thing is you do get profits and stuff, but, um, you know, just good investing, good good habits. You know, you want to make sure you're just really smart about it. Uh, I'm going to conclude this episode, though. I want to keep this short. My goal is to keep this kind of this episode as short as possible. Let you guys know uh, this is kind of the pilot episode for YouTube. More than anything, I want to let you guys give a preview of what you guys were to expect. Uh, you guys are going to learn a lot. I'm going to make sure you learn a lot. It's all free education. My goal is to give you free, pure education. Make sure that you're smart, ready to roll. And you know what? I, I don't believe life should ever throw you curveballs, right? I believe, uh, well, I mean, it does, but I, don't, I believe you should be able to uh, stand your ground and be ready to create assets. And I want to go, in episode three, I do want to go over um, how to create assets. There are multiple ways to do it, but uh, make sure you're really creative. Creativity and imagination are the most important. Use that creativity and imagination to create the assets you need to get the cash flow you need, right? And there are multiple ways to create assets. You can create, um, <laughs> one thing I like to do is I like to resell items. I'll, 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 in one of my systems, I actually look for free items on Craigslist take those items from people who don't want them and and resell them for a profit on Facebook Marketplace. Two different mediums, too. So I, that, in a sense, creates an asset in which it uh, creates uh, cash flow without me having to really put forward a lot of money. So it doesn't take... That's why the whole... It doesn't take... It's why the whole idea that it takes money to make money is a very flawed idea, so I don't believe in it. Um, anyway, that concludes this one. This is going to be on YouTube and Facebook. I want to make sure it's on both... 
I'm not going to do many live streams. I prefer doing the pre-recorded video, less distraction, less comments. I get to get my focus thoughts out and really get uh, and get to you guys. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, much love. I'm going to continue to make these as much as I can. Have a good night. That's uh, episode two of Radical Money, baby. Check out our sponsor below.